Welcome to a tour bit on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show an extended example of working with the Meteor macro within Harlow 3.3. So we saw in a previous example video that we can use the float box macro to float a box, a subsection of a passage, into different parts of the web page in which it appears. So in a previous example, we saw that we can kind of do random encounters or a random-ish encounter system in which a health value might be changed as we navigated those encounters. This example builds on that previous example, but extends it using the meter macro. And so as we previously saw, when we examined the meter macro, that we can create a visual representation of percentage data. That is something in the range of zero to 100. And then based on where we position that meter, we can then have it expand from right to left, left to right, or from the center outwards but it always needs a variable, which is the minimum value, a maximum value, and then that positionality. So let's go ahead and look at this example. So we're gonna start with the start passage and notice I'm setting up health and response. And it, you start the adventure of perfect health and a pull of mana. Mana is not really used in this example, but I borrowed it from the previous one. And then we have link go to. So in a previous video, I was using link in the go to macro. In many forms within Harlow, there are shortcut versions of this. So instead of a link and then go to, I'm using link go to, which is the same operation right here. So show adventure, go to adventure. So let's jump over to adventure. Adventure is doing a very similar thing that what we saw before. I have broken up more complex functionality into smaller parts in their own passages. And then I'm now displaying or including those passages as part of one bigger passage. It then includes parts from others. So we have check health, which we'll look at here in just a moment, encounter, then we're displaying the response, then we're displaying the user interface, and remember doing all the math and then updating the user interface. And then finally, link go to again, so we'll repeat this same passage again and again and again. So let's look at check health and then we'll move to encounter. Check health performs a pretty simple thing right here. Just checks to see if health is less than or equal to zero. If it is, we immediately go to lose. And let's jump over to encounter for a second. Encounter is slightly more complicated, but not too more too complicated. We're getting a random number using a temporary variable roll. So from one to 20, as if it was a dice roll from one to 20. If it's less than or equal to 10, we are subtracting 20 from health. So set health to health minus 20. We are setting a response. You encountered an enemy and lost health. Or otherwise, if it's not, so it's greater than 10 or in less than 20, right? Nothing happened. So notice we're setting their response instead of replying back to a response. So something I showed in a previous video is how you can mix in text responses with collapsing white space, which is what these, these curly brackets are. And remember, of course, when we collapse white space, we combine all the space that the macros would have produced down to a single space. So instead of a bunch of lines, we collapse all that together. This also allows us, as we've seen here, if we have more complex functionality and lots of different macros going on or lots of different functionality going on, then we can easily collapse that all back down. And knowing it's going to be collapsed, we can spread it out. Notice I've got extra spaces around all of this, and I'm not worried about the space inside the curly brackets. So this can be very useful if you've got lots of complicated stuff or you're still working out code. Put it inside these curly brackets, knowing it, all that white space will be collapsed at the end. So instead of saying text or having text appear as part of this, I'm now using the response variable right here. I'm setting a response, and then we show it as part of adventure. In fact, let's go back to adventure to just see where we were. So check health checks to see if health is greater than or equal to zero. Just a single line of code, but it's in its own passage. Encounters more complicated, but it's doing that dice rolling behind the scenes using the random macro. Then we're showing the response right here to the user or player. Here's what happened. Then we're updating user interface. So let's go jump over to user interface. Similar to the previous video, on a very similar example, we're using float box. Notice that it's starting over on the right. So two equal signs and N and X. So it's starting on the right hand side. Remember the X marks the position for box and float box and Y marks the Y position for this. So this will be in the upper right hand corner. So all the way over to the right and then all the way up. And then we're using the meter macro right here. 
So the meter macro is binding to whatever current value of health is. And remember, we're using the check health passage to make sure health is never below zero. So we're always within that percentage range or within the range of zero to 100. Then I'm saying use the full length of the passage or the full length that's available, which is a single X, and show green. So finally, coming back to adventure, we have checked the health. So every time we come in here, we check to see health is greater than or equal to zero. If it's not, we move on to the next thing. Encounter rolls the dice, so to speak, using the random macro. We show the result. We update the health bar, which is what this example is going to show. And then if all of that is going fine, we adventure again. And we keep adventuring until we get to the end of it. So let's go ahead and build and play just so we see all of this in action. So we start and this is the link go to combination of link and go to. So nothing happened. So notice the meters up here and it's full green, right? It's positioned within float box. Float box is putting it up here in the upper right hand corner, starting in the X position of far right in the Y position of up. So we're all the way over here and it says health. And then we've got the health bar. Nothing happened. We adventure. Nothing happened. You encountered an enemy and lost health. Notice the health bar is now decreased. And we keep doing it each time until finally we're at no health. And so, ah, uh, you faint and then are transported back to the local inn. So the major change moving into this video compared with the previous one when we were just using values with the float box macro is the use of the meter macro. Notice that the visual representation of the data would have been the same as the data itself. That is, we could have just showed, could have just shown that is the numbers zero or 20 or 50 or 80 or whatever. But in this case, we're using the visual representation. So the same data, just an extra macro usage instead of the variable usage itself, but the exact same setup. So in this video, we've looked at an extended example of looking at the ways in which we can use the meter macro in the same way that we would have just shown a data value. So if we prefer a visual representation, we can use the meter macro. Again, understanding that we need a minimum value binding to some type of variable. We need a maximum value. We need positionality. So where are we positioning it? So it's starting from the left, starting from the right, starting from the center. And then we need a color. And I used green, but I could have also used red or other colors that are recognized by Harlow create that visual representation. So the same information, but presented in a different way using the meter macro within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.